All right, we are on air, booting up another live stream. Most of you guys are gonna be watching this right now, watching after the fact. But uh, I hope for some reason, if you're finding this video afterwards, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell or whatever, so you can hang out live, because the magic of live is being here for live. But don't run away yet, because I think we're gonna cover a lot of really interesting things tonight. We're gonna talk about like, well, does gear matter? And I absolutely believe that gear does matter. It shouldn't stop you if you don't have all the gear that you want, but it can definitely impact things. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the different vlogging cameras that are out right now. I've got an RX100 Mark V that I've been using, the Canon M50, we're gonna take questions. I'm gonna be trying out a super duper wild and crazy vlogging setup coming up here. I think tomorrow or the day after, I'm gonna make a video with the most cinematic setup I believe that there is out there, but it may be completely impractical, but it could be could be wild and it could be fun, but uh, it's always nice hanging out with people. I see my audio is clipping. Uh, let's turn that down a little bit. Let's turn that down a little bit. How about people coming to hang out? I love it, you guys. Holy, why is the audio so hot? Why is the audio so hot? How about now? Hey, I think that's a little bit better. Yeah, now it's too quiet. Too quiet. Hey. Yeah. All right, anyway, thanks you guys for joining. Tech for your needs, hello there, One Z Games. Who do we got here? Keith Workman, Connor J. Hatton, Ben Cruzat, Quazy Dog, and Miguel Abreu. Guys, what is up? Thanks for hanging out. Uh, hi from T.O., that's nice. We've got even further on the East Coast, Quazy Dog. Uh, man, so many people hanging out are good. Quazy Dog, man, these streams are MKBHD clean. Oh, you guys, just warm in my hearts. How about the introduction of IGTV today? Do you guys hear about this? Instagram TV, and it's basically like vertical video YouTube on their own network. Will be interesting, I saw MKBHD on there being like 45 second clip, like, hey, I'm here. It's interesting though, because, you know, for creators like myself or a big creator like MKBHD, it'll be interesting to see how you can't shoot things horizontally, you now have to shoot things vertically or crop in or think about it a little bit different. I wonder if that'll make it a barrier to entry, but if you guys haven't downloaded or checked it out, might be might be something. I'm, I'm excited to, to get into it. Curtis Paradise, IGTV, loving it already. I'm curious, Curtis, what did you watch that you saw was good content on there already? And it's always interesting, like for any of you creators out there to go, you know, get into a new platform, explore, and see what it's all about. And sometimes you can kind of jumpstart if you're in there early, whereas like YouTube's a wildly saturated platform. Could be could be interesting if you take your camera, turn it vertical and start making some cool content, you might get further ahead. Who knows? I don't know about algorithms and search and all those different things. It'll be interesting to see what ends up happening out there. Greg Moore, where's Greg? Let's do this. This is Justin's channel, not Justin and Greg. So Greg, you can get bent, get back to editing the vlog that we need to put out on Justin and Greg. Uh, what are we gonna talk about tonight? Now that you guys, uh, some of you are joining, we're gonna talk about, hey, does gear matter? We're gonna talk about some of the best gear I feel like for vlogging. I've picked up a new couple of things. You guys have seen some videos on the M50. I actually finally bought, and by I, Greg's here too, we bought an RX100 Mark V. We'll talk a little bit about why we did that. Sony has a new camera they're announcing in the next one, two months. Who knows if it will solve some of the issues I've had that have made me switch away from using my Sony on the regular. Uh, what else? Any questions you guys end up having? And yeah, just a chance to hang out. It is always good to do that. If you notice my channel has been a little bit quiet lately, we've been pouring so much time and energy into Justin and Greg. And there have been some wild, crazy things that have happened over on that channel, specifically, we made this video as a pump-up video for the Vegas Golden Knights. If you don't know them, they're a professional hockey team. They were supposed to finish last this year, and instead of finishing last, they ended up finishing first in their division and went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, like the championship. And after four games, they were down three games to one. And Greg and I have been kind of, they're a new team this year, brand new to the league. But early on in the year, we, we kind of picked them and said, we're going to back them, we're going to be all in. And fans were so bummed out because they were down three to one. We're like, we need to make like a hype video to let people know that it's not over. And we made this video actually right here in the studio and it went nuts, like 180,000 views on Facebook, 30 some thousand views on Twitter, um, just thousands of shares, comments, likes, it was, it was crazy. And then the team emailed us and was like, yo, we love this video. 
Can we use it as the intro video inside the arena for game five? So you've got two morons from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada from their basement creating a video that was shown as the intro video in the entertainment capital of the world in the biggest sports game they've ever had. It was a, you know, it was a pretty special moment. Uh, they ended up losing the game, but they came out really strong. Another special part of that story is we found out one of the players sent us a message and said, hey, great video. Just so you know, we played that in the locker room before the game to get ourselves hyped. And uh, anyway, that's that's pretty cool impact that you can have from kind of anywhere. And that's, that's why I love the internet. That's why I love YouTube. It's uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Josh Harvey says, are you still sporting the Elgato HDMI capture device? Great quality stream. I'm looking for something for our church. Yes. I don't want to pull this too far, but can we sneak it into the screen? Ah, there's an Elgato HD60, not the HD60S, the Elgato HD60. And it just kind of works really well. Uh, their software, you got to use their software to be able to stream, but it works great on a Mac anyway. You got to use the software. It is super cool. Uh, Keith Workman says it'd be nice if Apple could do a program Mac to make the video auto, makes it pick landscape mode or portrait mode with all in one videos that do both. Yeah. Um, we actually just did a series of kind of like 15 second commercials that we wrote and shot and and produced like we did the we did the whole things for for a company but they wanted vertical instagram versions and they wanted horizontal versions and so i had to shoot them in 4k which the sony came in really handy for shot it in 4k and then i was able to crop out the vertically you know the only thing there is that you have to think through that so when we're setting up the shots we're making sure okay have have I framed this up in a way that I can cut it out vertically? And, you know, we're kind of like, it was kind of scripted and it was, it was super fun, but kind of changing angles. But that was the way to do it was shooting wide in 4K so you can crop in. But it's a little bit more work in post because, you know, you got to you gotta work with it and, and move some things around. But in the end, I thought it turned out pretty good. Earth Paradise, you guys did an awesome job. So awesome to see it on the big screen. Thanks, Curtis. Uh, I'm sad you're leaving our city, going to bigger pastures. So... Anyway, that's super exciting for you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about gear because this is a channel about gear and maybe specifically about uh, vlogging. One of the new announcements is Sony announced their new Sony RX100 Mark VI. This is a Mark V, which I had bought exactly 13 days before the announcement of the Mark VI. And so I was like, I was hearing all the rumors, like, they're going to announce it tomorrow. They're going to announce it tomorrow. I'm like, well, I'm still within the return window. So I was like, I'll return it and get the Mark VI. But then they announced the Mark VI. And if you're not too familiar with the features, it's basically like the RX100 Mark VI has maybe a slightly better processor. And the real change came in the lens. So where this lens is basically a 24 to 70 equivalent going from f1.8 to f2.8, you know, so really wide aperture. And again, it's got the big one inch sensor in it, which makes it so great for vlogging. Plus, you know, it's got contrast and phase detection, great autofocus, shoots 120 frames per second in great quality, can shoot up to 960 frames per second in kind of garbage quality, shoots 4K, optically stabilized lens, like all around like a powerhouse for vlogging. They announced the Mark VI and basically what they did was they changed the lens where this is 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8, they went to a 24 to 200, so going from 70 to 200, but then they had to change it from being f1.8 on the wide end to f2.8, and then I think it's f4.5 on the long zoom range. And the thing that makes this camera so amazing, two things, why I love it when I'm vlogging, is it's really good in low light because at the wide angle setting, f1.8 is letting in a ton of light, and it's also blurring out the background to give you that cinematic kind of look where your face is in focus, but the background is blurring out. And they absolutely ruined that with the new version. So yes, you get a little bit longer reach. I mean, a lot longer reach on the far end, but now it's like, like less than half the amount of light is getting in on the wide end. And then as you zoom, you're, you're, you're losing it. And it just, it, it felt silly. So anyway, I'm not returning this. I'm definitely keeping the Mark V. Uh, we bought this because uh, the last hockey game that we went to, uh, before we could get media credentials and we could get in with a, a bigger camera rig, but for the last one, the, the National Hockey League did the media credentials and we, we couldn't get media credentials. So we just had regular tickets and they don't allow interchangeable lens cameras. So they don't let in any cameras where you can change the lenses on them. This one, the lens doesn't change on it. So it's like the best option. And it's actually amazing what this thing can do. 
obviously not cheap, but all around for, you know, compact cameras, if you're looking to do video, this, this is better, much better than the G7X Mark II. It's better than the Panasonic LX10 or LX100. Um, it's just, it's the king, uh, but you, you need extra batteries too. Like we, I bought two extra batteries and, and we just fired right through them. I was having to charge on a mobile charging station because, well, Sony battery life plus really little. Anyway, it's, it's interesting, but I was hoping that uh, Sony would, Sony would figure this out. So let's, uh, yeah. Here, here's, here's the thing that makes me a little bit nervous is Sony is about to announce in the next one to two months either the new Sony um, uh, A7S III or like an A6700 replacement for this. Um, with what they did with the RX100 Mark VI where they ruined it, I had such high hopes that they would fix either the A7S III or the A6700 to give us a flip out screen so we could see ourselves, so I could actually use the camera for vlogging. Uh, but I, I don't know that I necessarily trust them. So it'll be interesting. Uh, Andrew says, I'm going to be finally making the jump into trying vlogging. No idea what to get equipment wise, has to be cheap. Use your phone. If it has to be cheap, use your phone and then you can get, depending on your phone, but you can get a little plug in microphone that'll make it easier, Rode Video Mic Me. Um, and that's probably honestly where you're going to want to start unless you can get to the point of spending like seven, 800 bucks, then you can get into something that's going to, you know, take up the quality. But until then start, uh, start with the phone. So Curtis Paradise says, I don't understand why companies skip the flip out screen. It, I, I honestly, I have no idea because the thing that I would think why they wouldn't want to put a flip out screen on it would be maybe like the size of the camera because maybe it adds a little bit more to add that hinge. It's not much though in the way the ports go and things. I think some cameras would or companies would be worried about the flip out screen breaking off potentially, but Panasonic and Canon have been doing it for so long and they don't break off. Even like in vlogging and different things, it's very rare unless you like drop the camera on the screen, but like 200 vlogs I did on the Panasonic G7 with flip out screen, never had any problems with the screen. Um, you know, I've got the M50 with the flip out screen, like it is no problem and it would solve so, so much. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Josh Sarwano says, how's your SL2 loving mine? So fun thing, I got the SL2. And then like a week later, the local Don's photo is like, hey, we have the Canon M50, do you wanna try it? And I was like, yeah, like sure, I'll give it a go. And I got it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna keep this. So I got rid of the SL2 and got the M50. Now, the only reason that I did that uh, was simply about size. The, you know, the quality wise, SL2 and this are, are very, very similar. The nice thing about the SL2 is with the ultra wide angle lens, you get a little bit wider at 10 versus 11 millimeters. This has digital image stabilization, which can be handy when you've got something like the 22 millimeter on it. Um, but otherwise I would never like say somebody needs to sell their SL2 and get an M50 unless like you travel a lot and having that smaller size is important. This is a chunk smaller and we do travel a lot. So, you know, I thought I would try it with that Digic 8 processor and the 4K in it can be handy in certain situations. So M50 is nice, but SL2 is also a great vlogging camera if you're getting started either of these is absolutely fantastic. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Curse Paradise, yeah, we're gonna talk about the, the trifecta for vlogging cameras. Um, Miguel Brave says, I know it's a random question, but can I ask what setup you're using uh, this live stream? I'm using an Elgato HD60, which is a capture card. And then plugged into that, I have my Sony A6500 with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens on there. So it can actually, I think like, you know, it autofocuses really nicely. Isn't that nice, you guys? I just love like, this is this is the problem I had with Panasonic was you couldn't do stuff like this. So I could take like, hey, check out this sweet camera. Boom, it's in focus. Anyway, that's, uh, that's a nerdy detail. So that, and then there's a little pencil uh, or a shotgun mic up there. And together I'm putting that. Uh, Penafalk and how about speed booster on M50? So my buddy Dave Altizer um, did a video about this. It's called like full frame Canon mirrorless camera. It's a clickbaity title and he knows and it's funny. But he got like a little speed booster adapter which basically takes, uh, you could put full frame lenses on it and then you get full frame width. So it goes even wider. I don't think it um, like increases the aperture um, but it does give you a chunk wider which is nice. And I was thinking about 
Um, the big limitation I have with the M50 or something like the SL2, which is what I'm going to talk about here shortly, is uh, in low light. Um, I have not found this camera to be very good in like low light situations. Once you start cranking over like ISO 1600 and you're starting to push that sensor a little bit more, the footage kind of falls apart a little bit. And plus like the lens, it's, you know, it's F4 on the wide to 5.6. It's not like super fast. And so I know we were doing a video um, in Caesar's Palace in Vegas in their buffet and we were kind of a table in the back and the lighting wasn't good. And I had to put it to like, ISO 12,800 and the footage was just like, it was bad. Um, so if a speed booster maybe let in more light, that'd be something, but what would be nice about it is you could put on like a 16 to 35, two eight, um, you know, which would be a big lens on it, but you could get in some more light. You'd have to use a digital IS in here to try and stabilize it because there's no stabilization, but you know, that's, that's kind of the challenge is like every camera, is different. And maybe this is a part where I will say, that, say this, does gear matter? And I would say absolutely gear matters in a sense. There, I'll, I will balance this out, but there's, it's funny. I always like, I see these comments. I had this um, switching back to Canon video. It's got like 60,000 views and it's going kind of nuts. And there's like so many people who are all on the like gear doesn't matter. Uh, but I find a lot of the people are saying that are in two camps. One, they're in the camp of they have a ton of gear. Like they have all the gear and they're like, gear doesn't matter. And it's like, okay, well, that's fine for you to say when you have all the gear. And it's kind of feels like you're on a soapbox telling people like, hey, gear doesn't matter. I know I have all the gear, but you know, it doesn't matter. Just story tell. And then the other people who say it are the people that gear doesn't matter. It's about the story. And they're people who don't create a lot. And for me, I don't believe your lack of gear should ever, ever stop you from creating something because you can tell great stories on a phone. You can tell great stories on a cheap point and shoot. It's just, it's harder. Um, and it'll take a little bit more time and a little bit more creativity, um, you know, and it'll be a, require a little bit more work and a little bit more knowledge and know-how. And so that's why like pros, when you get a whole bunch of knowledge and know-how and you know what you're doing, it's easier to create on something that, you know, isn't as good. Uh, but having the right tool, it's like a carpenter. Could a master carpenter build a house with a handsaw and a hammer and all like manual tools? Sure he could, but how much faster and more efficient would he be if he had proper power tools? And so gear does matter to me. And when it comes to vlogging, this is what I, this is what I personally need slash want for vlogging. Okay. Now, not everybody needs this because not everybody is in the boat that we are where um, we are at times being paid by companies to create vlogs going through experiences where we don't get a redo. And so it's different, I think, if it's your own vlog and a stage where I was at for a long time. It's still lots of our vlogs we don't get paid for. We just do them because they're fun. But when you are capturing a moment, it's like doing a wedding. If you're doing a wedding, you don't want to have like gear where, yeah, I might miss focus here and, you know, it's not great. Um, you know, or if you like, like you can't afford that because you only get one shot at it. And lots of what we're doing, we only get one shot at it. We experience it and then the experience is over. And so if a shot is out of focus, well, there's nothing we can do, but it looks bad on us and we're trying to put out the best quality product. And especially if somebody's kind of paying you to do it, you want to be able to do that. So in order for me to be able to do that, and not waste a whole bunch of time, here's what I want slash need in a vlogging camera. Great autofocus, because I cannot afford, nor, I mean, you maybe the odd time you're okay with the shopping out of focus, but I just feel like it's so like uh, amateur when you're doing a shot and the shot is out of focus. I do not like that. So the best autofocus possible. A flip out screen, because for me, when a camera is facing me, a lot of times when you're vlogging and you're going through different environments, you don't have time to set up the proper exposure all the time. You're relying on some sort of automatic letting the camera read. And usually it's like leaving it in an auto ISO or even a full auto mode and letting the camera roll. The problem that can happen is if you run into a situation and you don't notice that there is something really bright behind you, the camera will compensate for that. And what will happen is your face will get dark and you will have a shot where you're talking to the camera. If you can't see yourself on the other side, the camera's adjusted for it. There's something bright in the background and your face is dark and you lose the shot. It's like being out of focus. But if you have a screen where you can see yourself, you can always kind of like, you know, sneak a peek or before you hit record, just make sure that your, your background is bogey free, uh, mostly for lights. But the other thing too, that it's really helpful for is 
when I set up a shot and we're talking, I don't want the background crooked. I want my lines to be straight. I want things to be relatively symmetrical. And I also want to make sure, especially for Greg and I, when we're in a shot, that we're both in the shot and it's not like I'm here and he's like, you know, his face is out here. And sometimes that can be really hard to tell, especially with ultra wide angle lenses. Like, are you properly balanced and set up? So having a flip out screen is an absolute must. Audio input jack, um, because you go places and it's windy. And I had this happen once with the M50 where this was actually unplugged very slightly and it was windy out and it ruined the audio for the shots. Like it was bad and luckily it didn't last long. I got it plugged back in, but onboard microphones do not provide anywhere close to like professional quality audio or even just like good audio if the wind picks up at all. They're actually like, they're fine. Like this indoors, cool. It actually worked fine. Like it was, it was good. But as soon as you get outdoors, it can be a bit of a mess. So that, we're, we're now like, for me, those are like, if you get a flip out screen, an audio input jack and good autofocus, like those are like, those for me are like the basic needs. Now we're gonna flip over a little bit into some of my wants, okay? So my wants are, I'd like it to be a little bit more cinematic than what I'm currently shooting where faces are in focus and backgrounds get a little bit blurry because that looks like a little bit more professional when you're able to do that. I also wanna have better low light performance because this camera falls apart a little bit in low light. And so mm, it's not like, it's not the best when you get into those situations. There's so much grain and the colors just get smushed and like it doesn't look great. And some of that is if there was a lens option that was say an ultra wide like 2.8, you know, lens, well, that would help a lot because then we could get in that's twice as much light as F4. And especially when you zoom in, now you're talking about four times as much light. Um, so, you know, that could make a difference, but they, they don't really make that for that. And you could do adapters and you can do different things, but, um, you know, and that would help blur the background, but you know, that's where for me, I'd love to push into something full frame. And that's where I'm actually so annoyed at Sony cameras because Sony basically has it all. They just won't give us a flip out screen. And for me, like a flip out screen is just like, it's a must. Like I've got the a6500, which is a great camera. It's so much better at low light. I've got a constant F4, you know, the 10 to 18 millimeter image stabilized would be a perfect vlogging setup. Colors aren't as good, but you can work around that. It's a pain, but you know, anybody who says, oh, color science doesn't matter. It, it does. Like it absolutely does when you start editing it, but I can work around that. I just can't see myself and it drives me crazy. And I've tried putting a screen on top and that is a gigantic pain in the butt, not willing to do it. So Sony, if you're listening, please, in whatever this next camera is, A7S III, that would actually be my preference with a flip out screen or an A6700 with a flip out screen, give it to us. Uh, other things would just be stabilization too. Having some kind of in-body or digital in-body image stabilization is better or in the lens or something just so it's not shaky all of the time because that's something else that seems a bit professional. All uh, right, we are, well, we got some comments. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Tech for your needs, M50 4K limit and overheat. Uh, 4K recording limit, I think all the recording limit on the camera is 30 minutes. I've never had it overheat ever. I've never had it overheat. Um, and I've not that I've recorded 4K like forever, but I'm pretty sure I've done like a 20 minute stint on 4K, never end overheating issues, but I haven't done it a ton. On 1080, I've never ever run into any kind of overheating issue on the M50. Uh, ba ba Curse Paradise, ooh, fast autofocus, I'm jelly. Yeah, uh, I mean, GH5, I think still, Curtis. Uh, I mean, great in so many other ways. Uh, ba ba Josh Sorwono, is that a Fender Strat? No, it's like a knockoff for a charity event where there was a signed Paul McCartney guitar, I think. Um, and we bought the same guitar and in the auction threw it and let it smash on the floor and everybody lost their minds. We signed it, we copied his signature, uh, but it was a joke. So anyway, it sits there. Uh, but Warren Hill Vlog says, hello, I'll be right back. Greg Moore, who, if you don't know, Greg's my like partner in crime on Justin and Greg and we work, we got a business together says, literally editing that video right now, noisy in the dark. M50 is noisy in the dark. Uh, my girl Brady says, exactly, gear definitely helps a lot. And I agree. Straight Six Fan says, congratulations again on the million views. Yeah, that was actually super cool is uh, this channel rolled over 1 million views and over three and a half million minutes watched. And that's a lot of time you guys have spent with me. So thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, like it feels special. And there's people who have like, hey, a million subscribers, cool. And I'm just like, well, I'm a long ways away. I'm like almost at 1% of that, but it still feels wildly special to have a million views. It's a, 
you know, it's a big, big thing. But uh, Straight Six says, says, I agree with you. Gear doesn't matter to get started, but rarely do you regret the, regret the upgrade either. Yeah, I don't, uh, don't normally regret it. Keith Workman says, I'm taking out vlogging gear from Toronto Library to try an apartment tour on June 1st, 2018. Uh, that was a couple weeks ago, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's just a number missing there. Uh, the best way to learn about vlogging is just to do it a lot. Uh, Gadget Gamer TV says, looking at the SL2, is that a good suggestion? Yes, SL2 is my top suggestion for $1,000. Get an SL2, and then there's a Creator Kit bundle, which gives you the 10 to 18 millimeter ultra wide angle lens and the 50 millimeter F1.8. And then you can get a Rode Video Micro, no, video, yeah, video micro and an SD card and a tripod for like a thousand bucks. That is the best vlogging rig, in my opinion, for getting started. And there's a, another video on this channel, uh, if you check it out, that walks you through that and has links to everything if you want to see. Penna Falcon says, I'm looking for buying the M50 and I'm going to Arizona next week. I hope it won't overheat in 100, 110 degree weather, lol. Well, we had it in Vegas. It wasn't quite 110 degrees, but it was in the 90s, which was very hot. Uh, vlogging like nonstop. Like we took it to the Grand Canyon. It was hot that day. Like we're in the bottom of Grand Canyon. We got a helicopter tour out there um, and never had a single issue with it overheating. So I don't think you were going to find any issues with it overheating. But who knows? If it's really long, like if, if I hit record for 20 minutes and I left it baking in the sun, yeah, maybe. But generally vlogging, turn it off and on. It's, it's fine. Uh, straight six fan. I love to hang out longer, but got to go watch another video for research reasons. Yeah, go learn. Uh, absolutely. Eddie Martinez, Sony a6000 or Can Canon M50 for photography. I'm probably going to say the Sony because there's better lenses for it now. Um, and Sony does great video and a lot of things really great. So yeah, although I love the combo of the M50 and this 22 millimeter F2 cause it's tiny and it works good, but yeah. Uh, Gadget Gamer TV, also I'm getting the M50 and the 18 to 55 millimeter lens because my badge is low. Any other suggestions? I vlog a lot. Um, the kit lens with the M50 is actually great. It's actually, it's 15 millimeters on the wide end, which is like a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent, but it's a, it's a good width. Whereas the SL2 kit lens is 18 millimeters, which works out to like 27, 28. Anyway, not that wide and you're getting a lot more face. So that's good. And if you're getting an M50, get the 22 millimeter f2 this is just the best the best little lens just get that it's your b-roll lens it looks awesome it blurs the background you turn on the digital is it works great uh but, but, but tech for your needs road video micro is a good mic because you don't need no battery power to it yes that's why i love it is they actually seem fairly robust and if you break one it's not like 300 bucks it's like $59 US and generally they work and they come with the they come with a big windscreen which is normally another like 30 or 40 bucks. It's a great combo. Um, and I don't find it like noisy at all. So let's talk about the ultimate vlogging rig that I'm going to be picking up tomorrow or the day after. Um, this is uh this is gonna be cool. Now again, we talked a little bit more about you know the things for a camera that I need. And again, where I'm stuck right now is if Sony had a flip out screen, it would, I, I would just, I would be so happy because Sony does so many things so well and the value is insane, but because it won't give me a flip out screen, it just, it ruins the workflow for me. Like I just, it's crazy how when I went from the A6500 to using the SL2 and the M50, I was just so much happier. Like it just makes me so much happier to vlog with it. Whereas I'm frustrated with the A6500 all the time because I can't see myself. And when I go to edit, there's so many shots where I realize I would have done something different if I'd just been able to see myself. And it is not practical for vlogging. Anybody who says, just put use your phone and use the app. Nope, you will. One, your the battery life already sucks on it. So it's gonna suck more battery life. It's laggy. It takes time every single time to like turn it on and set it up. And when you're running and gunning and vlogging, you just waste so much time. If you're the kind of vlogger where you only set up three different places, but usually I've got like 100 to 300 different shots for a vlog. There's just no way that that works. And I've had the screen on top with the batteries and that also is a gigantic pain and makes it massive and blocks the light from your face. And there's so many things to it. So I wish I, wish I could go that way. I can't. So Sony is out because there's no flip out screen. Panasonic, like a, a GH5, does everything I kind of need it. It doesn't blur the background as much because a small sensor, I could probably live with that and work around that. But the, the real problem is the focus, is the, the autofocus is, is not reliable, it is not fast, and I would burn too many shots with things being out of focus. And yes, there are ways around it, it just, it, 
it slows you down and you get a GH5S for low light, but then if you get an ultra wide angle lens, you've got no stabilization. So it ends up being kind of shaky. And for us, we're vlogging two people. And so you maybe wouldn't need as wide angle of a lens if it's just you, but when there's two of us, absolutely. And again, kind of want to think about that cinematic blurry background. So what I've come up with as the ultimate cinematic, like kind of does everything vlogging camera that I'm going to be trying out is, and this will get some hate from some people, but it's fine. A Canon 6D Mark II, because you're getting a full frame sensor, a flip out screen, okay? With great autofocus and a microphone input jack. So cool. I wish it did 120 frames per second, 4K, all that other kind of stuff, but 60 frames per second slow motion, when you do it right, it still looks really good. It's not as good as 120 frames per second, but that's fine. And I know dynamic range and all those kinds of things, that doesn't, that's not like a huge, huge issue. Low light, I'm curious to see how it is, but what's gonna help it is the lens I'm putting on it is a beast. It is the Tamron 15 to 30 uh, F2.8 VC. So it is a 2.8, 15 millimeter ultra wide angle lens with vibration control, which is like image stabilization built into it. So I'm gonna put that on the 6D Mark II. So we should get blurry backgrounds from it being a 2.8 lens. It's image stabilized, you know, and see how that whole combo works together. The things that I'm worried about, it's going to probably be massive and heavy. We'll see if it's completely unwieldy, but like people are vlogging with a 1DX Mark II, which is a big body. Um, I'm just curious to see, I know that lens is, it's, it's big and it's heavy. What I wanna see is the focusing, is the focusing reliable with that older motor in it? And how noisy is it? Is the, is the autofocus gonna get picked up in the microphone? But I'm curious to try it out and see. I'm gonna borrow it from Don's photo and, the, and I'm gonna make a video about reviewing it. But if it works, we're talking about a full frame, good autofocusing vlogging camera with a 2.8 lens that is image stabilized? Yes, please. We'll see how it works out though. Should uh, should be, I'm very curious to try it out. Um, it's kind of overkill. And if Sony would just release the camera that I wanted, it, completely unnecessary, but it, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to try. So, oh, comments, comments. Hey, what drone are you using now? Would you buy the new Ronin S? Do you mean stabilizer, Keith? Uh, can it? Yeah, I think you mean stabilizer. Uh, Ronin S looks great. Reviews I've seen on it looks great. I had the Moza Air and it was cool. I'm just not like a stabilizer guy. Like for the kind of uh, shooting I do, I don't think like a stabilizer for vlogging to me is a bit too obnoxious and worrisome and can't just like throw it places. You want to be careful with the stabilizer. And stabilizers I found took a little bit too long to balance for my like run and gun style. Um, but if I had to buy a stabilizer, which Maybe I will at some point for some shots. Cinematic-y stuff, uh, I definitely consider the Ronin S. Moza Air was good too. It seems like the Zhiyun Crane works good too. Like the, we're in the era of like good quality stabilizers. I mean, it's crazy when I watch a guy like Peter McKinnon, there's this shot, like it's a long time ago, but he got his new like Movi Pro, which is like the Mac Daddy. And they've got this Land Rover like driving through a puddle and he's running full out, just holding the Movi and the motion came out smooth. I'm like, I have no idea how that thing works, but it's crazy. So, you know, kind of crazy. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Eddie Martinez says, I've seen several videos. Great job. Thank you, Eddie. Have you done a video on the 22 millimeter F2? Um, ba, 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 ba. I don't No, I haven't actually. I don't think I've done just like a straight review on it, which apparently I should and throw in some footage of different things. So anyway, that needs to, that needs to be a video. Uh, Gadget Gamer TV, how do you get the purple highlight in your videos? Is it a key light with a magenta filter? Uh, so I have overhead here on a big C stand, it goes up like this and over, there's a light that I just put a pink, pinky gel on. And so it's just shooting like straight down. And then I have two lamps facing, this one was supposed to be like this, I moved it, I forgot. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, I just have like two lamps with LED multicolored bulbs that you can change. I got for cheap off Amazon. And then uh, two lights here, and that's kind of the lighting setup. So that's how it works out. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, Gadget Gamer TV, how bad is the crop factor of a 50 millimeter 1.8 on APS-C sensor camera, SL2? So basically it works out to about an 80 millimeter 
which is great for portraits and great for kind of B-roll stuff. But, you know, it's a, it'd be like close to an 85 millimeter on a full frame, which is a cool distance for showing off. Like, you get that lens to show off details of things. Because it's interesting to talk about something, but if you walk into a coffee shop and you want to make a cliche coffee B-roll video, is then you can get up and close and show beans and show grinders and show espresso coming out without having to like one, put the camera in there, but also like ultra wide angle lenses kind of distort things, whereas those like more flatten. Plus the background gets so crazy blurry on that when you're at 50 millimeter, which is like 80 millimeter at F1.8. That's where you get that really cinematic look where you get to decide what's in focus and what's not in focus and tell stories. Whereas with an ultra wide angle lens at F4, F4.5, there's just so much stuff in focus. And so it just gives it a completely different feel. Uh, ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Curse Paradise sounds awesome. Can't wait to see the content coming to that camera. I'm very curious to see too. Uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. The problem will be I'm worried that I will really like it and then I will want to try and figure out how to keep it. I've got like, I think $1,200 US in Amazon gift cards from you guys graciously clicking links. So that would take like a bite out of it, but it would still be a lot more. Full frame stuff is just so expensive, uh, crazy. Keith Workman, more coffee videos of you at coffee shops in Regina. I used to live there a long time ago. All right. I have to, we need like some new, actually there's like one, we need some new coffee shops to open up. Feels like it's been a little while. We went through a phase where there's lots of coffee shops opening up. There's a new board game cafe. I am English TV, smash the like button. Hey, 27 people watching, smash that like button. I would uh, greatly appreciate that. Graphic mill, the 15 to 30. Yep, that's what we're doing. Tamron 15 to 30, F28 something something VC. It'll be cool. Uh, tech for your needs. How do you balance both channels now that you are known for both? That's actually a great question. In some ways, I feel like I've been neglecting this channel because we've just been investing so heavily in Justin and Greg because honestly, it's just had so much momentum and that's what we're trying to build up. Um, you know, this channel is very, I would say niche for people who like my style of reviewing cameras and maybe a little bit more focused on the vlog content, um, you know, and vlog tips and tricks. So that's cool. Justin and Greg were trying to build into something bigger. And like Justin and Greg have been NHL media inside of locker rooms. We're interviewing, you know, LPGA players. We've had like, you know, multi, multi millionaires on the show and like our premier, which is like the governor, we've interviewed him. And like, there's just like, there's a lot of really cool things that have happened um, that, you know, with just momentum. So it's tough, honestly, you guys. Um, the other problem I have is we kind of work during the day and then hang out with like kids and family. And after they go to bed is a time when I make a lot of the YouTube videos that you see on this channel. Well, the problem is there's no daylight left because it's in the evening and I'm up late editing videos. And so a lot of the videos I want to create are like out and about and, you know, even doing camera reviews, like real world in the day, trying it out in nice places. But usually by the time I get to creating videos is it's dark out. So that's a challenge too. So I'm trying to figure out how I can carve out even like half a day each week to keep feeding this channel because I like it. Uh, when I was at NAB this year, I met Brandon Washington and uh, Dave from Kinotika. And it was funny because at that time, excuse me, I think I was leading the way at like, I had almost 6,000 subscribers and they were both just about to cross 5,000. And I'm at like 7,900 and they both passed 10,000 because they've had more time to invest in their channels and they're great creators and they do what they do. And I haven't put out as many videos as I wanted to since then. So I want to crack that 10K mark. So we'll see. I might make a little bit of a push here, but I don't want to just create campy videos. I could do that and maybe that would help, but yeah, who knows? It's tough balancing. I mean, it's just like, yeah, there's just not enough hours in the day to do what I want to do. So, uh, Penna Falcon, I'm a noob for buying the camera in the States. I just moved from Taiwan. Will they be cheaper on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? I don't know. No, uh, I don't know. You just gotta, some of it always depends too on like what the can camera you want to buy, like what that manufacturer has coming next and what they're going to release. Like Canon's apparently got a, a newer like the replacement for the M5 is going to be coming out. So that'll knock down some prices on some other things and some new lenses and who knows. But here's, here's the worst thing that you can do is wait for a camera to come out and not be creating. Like the best thing to do is right now is just go buy a camera. Like if you're waiting like four or five months to get a camera to start creating, like that's, that's a waste of your time. Buy something today. Even if it's lower quality, you will get so much better, so much faster by just going and doing something right now. So... I would absolutely recommend that. 
Gadget Gamer TV, what camera backpack do you use? Uh, I have a Low Pro Pro Tactic AW350. Actually, it's right here. Let me grab it. So it is one of these. Low Pro, and it looks cool, and the inside of it looks something like whatever's left in here. Uh, the problem is, is when I bought this, I had a 13-inch laptop, and so it fit in here. And then I upgraded to the 15-inch MacBook Pro, and now that doesn't fit in here. So it's kind of a pain. I saw this new Low Pro bag today at Don's Photo that I want, though. Uh, that's kind of like similar, but it fits a 15-inch laptop and isn't massive. So Because I use mirrorless cameras, so you just don't need as much stuff. Although if I do a full-frame one, who knows? Oh, all right, uh, we're gonna go three more minutes and then I'll probably wind this down. Tech says, what do you think about the Panasonic Lumix G9? I haven't tried the Lumix G9 yet. Um, again, history, I had the G7, I had the G85. I've tried the GH5, I've tried out the GX85, the GX850, the, you know, a lot of Panasonic cameras. Um, I haven't seen a proper review of the G9 autofocus. I've seen some ones where they've put it in what I would still consider fairly easy conditions without lenses that really blur the background and it's worked pretty well. But I wanna see something like a walking and talking, which the GH5 just absolutely fell apart in, like could not track focus going in and out the whole time, or some of the tougher situations I've run into vlogging and see how it stacks up. So I might go back to Panasonic. I haven't actually chatted with them in a while and requested a camera, see if they have one that they could loan me because I'd be curious to see um, how it does. It's a wild and incredible camera on all the spec sheets. It's just Panasonic, their focusing has let me down consistently for the style that I use. But for other people's style, it you know, could be fine. But uh, yeah, just me and that me and that autofocus just don't quite see eye to eye. Josh Boozy says, just bought the G85. I'm not finding the autofocus as bad as everyone was making it out to be. Granted, most of my filming is in 1080p, but I don't find an issue. I haven't upgraded the firmware yet. And again, a lot of it's a style thing. Um, you know, and depending the kind of videos that you're doing, you put it in single point, you put that uh, box where your face is, and generally that works pretty well. And that's what I found, but I still found like, there's stuff like, you can't do this with the G85 reliably um, at shallow depths of field. You know, at something like this running F1.8, it's just like, it's just not going to do that. Um, and especially once the lighting conditions get suboptimal and you don't have a high contrast subject, it just kind of, it struggles. And like the little box knows exactly where the eye is. It just can't tell that the eye's out of focus. And so there's just like some things with it where I've, I, I found after using it enough, again, there's lots of ways to work around it, but it was extra work and extra something for me to think about. Now, here's the thing that maybe not everybody has to deal with, but um, Justin and Greg, which again is kind of our, our professional channel that we're building right now, Justin and Greg are characters, they're more caricatures of who we are, and we have to be in character uh, a little bit. Like we're a little bit zanier and more out there and a little bit more wild and we've got our quirks and our different things. So we are performing in some sense. And so that's something that we have to think about a little bit of, of being in the zone of being in performance. If, if I'm having to think of much more than, hey, is the camera, like are we in frame and you know, is the lighting okay? And now if I'm having to worry, are our faces in focus? And the more stuff I have to worry about technically, the more it takes away from us being able to just like perform or have fun or be in the zone or be in the moment and be, you know, thinking of like, we're always playing off each other and, and doing that. So the less I have to think about, the better. Like, I don't want to have to worry about that kind of stuff. But there was a time where I did a vlog where it was just me and I had a little bit more time and I, I wasn't in that same kind of zone. And so I was able to, you know, work around it, you know, and take an extra couple seconds here and there to make sure that the autofocus was okay and, you know, give it a few seconds to catch up, you know, but I, I just don't, I don't want to have to do that. But the G85 is a wild and amazing camera. The in-body image stabilization is so good. The 4K is so handy, but, you know, it's a great compact size. It's well, but there's so many good things about it. So don't switch. I'm not saying don't switch, but um, yeah is cool. Uh, Toy Hunting Gamers, good to see you, Justin. Good to see you. Well, I'll read your comment. Joshua Evers, what is better to buy? Use SL2 with Joby Kit Lens and Nifty 50. No mic for 500 or new M50 Video Creators Kit for 750. 
Um, I, that just always the context of what you're going to be shooting with it. M50 is a better camera. You've got in-body or the digital IS. It's a little bit smaller. It's got the newer processor. The kit lens on it is actually like not bad, being 15 to uh, whatever it is, 45 or 55. And then you add on the 22 millimeter at some point. I don't know what I would. I yeah. I don't know. Either or. I'd just buy something and start. That's what I would say. Buy something and start. Chain Rhymer, I wish I would've, wouldn't have jumped into the Lumix ecosystem so much. The stills don't have as much information as I would like. Beautiful bi video camera, though. Yeah, I mean, it's a you know smaller sensor, so a little bit different. But I get, I like a lot of that stuff is technique. But yeah, I was shooting with a full frame camera the other day for one of our vlogs. And I was like, oh, it's been a long, I used to have full frame Nikon equipment. I haven't had full frame for years. I was like, yo, this is nice. Kind of miss that. Uh, Miguel Bray, you should leave a link for the channel, Justin and Greg. I think it's actually in the description because I did leave it. I was like, I'm going to take this out because the last one we did was Greg and I live streaming here, but I was like, I'll probably talk about it. So it should be in the description if you want to check it out. Um, it's kind of fun. Dank imagery. Which mics are those, Jay Reeves? Um, on here, Dank, this is a uh, Rode Video Micro. If you're talking about what's up there, this is a Rode NTG4 Plus. Uh, I think it's mildly broken because it has a little bit of a hiss. I got to check that out for the old uh, warranty purposes. So, uh, but, but, but Keith working one last thing, Justin, best cam for vlogging is still photo. That will be a debate till the end of days. But if you're getting started, M50 Canon SL2 is a great place to start. Kind of checks all the boxes and is not too expensive. Again, I'm going to try out a wild vlogging rig here of the Canon 60 Mark II with the Tamron 15 to 35 image stabilized and see if that is like uh, wild and crazy. Should be, should be fun. Dank imagery behind you, brother. Oh yes, those are, these are actually cheap. These are um, art. You can get them long with Quaid. Uh, pencil condensers, but they actually work great for like podcasting when Greg and I are doing podcasts and they're like 180 bucks for a pair and they work out really, really well. Um, if you guys want to see a, a, you know, very talented photographer Instagram channel, uh, Dank, Dank Favalos. Is that right? I don't know. You're gonna have to spell it. That's fine. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. toy hunting gamers. Where's that team video you did again? Um, check it out on Justin and Greg. The link is in the description. Uh, you will see it there. I think it's welcome to impossible is like in the thumbnail and there's like four pictures of us, but uh, Dawson Job, Justin, how do you get so many lenses from Panasonic? Uh, well, I guess there's a couple of ways. One, I had, I had quite a Nikon setup. I had a Nikon D800, which was like a big full frame camera. And then I had an ultra, I had a Tokina ultra wide 2.8. I had a Tam, no, yeah, Tamron ult, or 24 to 70 2.8 and then 80 200 2.8. Like I had a lot invested in that. So some of that was... I sold that stuff and then I bought Panasonic and I bought a few of the lenses. And then, uh, how did I end up media credentialed for Panasonic? I don't even know. I think I just, I found a contact and I emailed them and I said, here's my YouTube channel. You know, I review stuff. Can I review some stuff for Panasonic? Cause I was already reviewing some of the stuff and I had some videos that were doing really well. And they said, sure, we'll make you part of the program. So if you have a YouTube channel and you're already kind of reviewing the stuff and it's finding some success, Panasonic Canada is who I deal with. And I think they're much easier to get into that than Panasonic USA or some of the other places because there's so many more creators. But Panasonic Canada, there weren't a lot of Canadians reviewing Panasonic lenses when I started. So that's how that worked out. So uh, Matt Rapport, my man, stopping by before I go to bed. Keep it up. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Josh Boozy, what editing program do you use or recommend that is free or budget friendly? Um, if you have a Mac, use iMovie. If you have a Windows, use Windows Movie Maker. Uh, they're both, I think, free and included, and they work. So that is good. Ba -ba -ba. And Keith Workman, Peter McKinnon versus Justin Rivas in a video shootout for fun. Hey, commented on one of my videos once, and that was a fun day. Also, I know Becky and Chris, who they know him and hang out with him from time to time. I'm very jealous. Guys, my dream right now is to somehow end up at 368, which if you follow Casey Neistat, you know what that is. Like to get invited there for some reason. I don't know how it'll work out or how it'll happen, but you know, maybe in the next couple of years, I'll end up there. Should be fun. Curtis Paradise, how's Final Cut 10 for you? Uh, if you guys didn't know this, I was on Adobe Premiere for years, and then I switched to Final Cut 10 probably now about seven, eight months ago. 
and I really love it because I can edit all of my footage without waiting and it works really well. And the magnetic timeline for like vlogs is a far superior method for editing videos. And so I can't imagine going back. Luckily they released some new color tools. It's a little bit better. Uh, there's a couple of things I miss from Premiere and I still use Adobe Media Encoder to convert, like when I've done a video and I wanna do like an Instagram version or this version or that version, as well as I still have Premiere to use for when, um, I'll do sometimes use it on Instagram stories where I'll, like, cause it's a vertical video, I'll start it out like this and then just like spin it and make it fill full fr full screen. Some of that stuff is just for whatever reason, it's easier in Premiere to do, so that's fun. Dean Baylor, do you use optimized media in Final Cut 10? I do not. I simply drop it on a portable hard drive and I open up Final Cut Pro 10 and I just start editing. Uh, 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro touch bar. So it's now like probably almost three years old, maybe two and a bit, I don't know. But uh, I mean, it's a quad core you know, MacBook Pro, but it edits 4K perfectly. It edits everything just perfectly without having to create optimized media. You don't have to worry about that. So that's what I love about it. I love it so much, actually. It's so nice. And also like exporting videos is so much faster, which when you're trying to like vlog and put out four or five videos a week and you are staying up late and you finish your edit and it's 1130 or midnight, and you're clicking export, and that export in Adobe Premiere is an hour and 20 minutes, and it's 10 or 15 minutes in Final Cut Pro 10 on this. That's just like, oh, you can't you can't beat that. But if you have time, then Premiere is fine too. Because you can do proxy media and you can do all that kind of stuff. But if speed is important, then it matters. So, oh, Emery Pectus. Hey, Justin, what do you think about the Nikon cameras? I use a Nikon D750 with Nikkor AFS 24-70 2.8. GED. Nikon is great for photos. Absolutely stunning for photos. For video, I just feel like they're behind. Um, and even Canon is like a little bit behind. They're definitely better because Canon has dual pixel autofocus for video, which means that's just a massive advantage. But like Sony and Panasonic are kind of crushing on video. Canon's kind of trying to keep up and then Nikon just feels like a million light years behind. But if you're given the right situation, which is you're okay manual focusing things and you're not like running and gunning, then I feel like Nikon's okay. But yeah, it's too bad. I really wish Nikon was better. I was a, I was a big Nikon lover for a while. Nikon D7000 I had and then I had the D800, all 2 way glass. It was amazing, but they just couldn't keep up on the video. Uh, Curse Paradise, how's the Touch Bar Mac working out for you? Any issues with the keyboard? Yep, just randomly keys will stop working and then they come back. I need to buy some more compressed air though, but uh, I think this thing is just gonna blow up one day and it's gonna leave me very sad, but I don't trust this thing at all, but it, it mostly works. So Apple, you need to do better, which is fine. Uh, Akil Ahmed, how about Panasonic Lumix G7 for vlogging or any else camera with vlogging with mic port? So I did 180 vlogs with the G7 and you can absolutely make it work. And it's a stunning camera for $500, but if all you were doing was vlogging, and you're, you're saying I want a camera for vlogging, then I would actually recommend the Canon SL2, which is similar in price, but then the lenses are so much cheaper. So my challenge with Panasonic is a G7 is cheap, but the kit lens is 14 millimeter, which works out to a 28 millimeter full frame. Anyway, it just means like you're getting like face, a lot of face in there and not that ultra wide angle perspective. Well, an ultra wide angle Panasonic vlogging lens is $900 US. Meanwhile, the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter is like $279. And so you can get an ultra wide angle lens for really cheap. So check out my video on the Canon SL2 for vlogging review. That is what I'm recommending. It's got a mic port, it's got a flip out screen. The lenses are cheap. It's just, it's a great option for starting out. And the 10 to 18 millimeters image stabilized. So yeah, it's just like, it makes a, makes a ton, ton of sense. Um, Dean Baylor, how come Sony can't figure out how to flip out the screen? Right? I have, I have, I just like, I'm, I'm annoyed because I have like a couple thousand dollars worth of Sony lenses sitting on the shelf that I never use anymore because I'm using a Canon with a flip out screen and they just flip, uh, anyway. New camera, one to two months. If it doesn't have it, then I'm just like, I'm selling all my Sony stuff. I'm saying, sorry guys. You're so good, you just can't do that, but. 
Uh, worship Tech Tools, I'm sure you already mentioned this tonight with streaming setup. Uh, Sony A6500 with a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter with the adapter. Comes out HDMI, goes into an Elgato HD60, not the HD60S, because that one makes your computer do the heavy lifting. The Elgato HD60 has uh, has the processor built into it, but and it's like 180 bucks. So any camera that can come out HDMI goes into there, and I've got a mic overhead, and that works out well. So Waffle Kang, I love that name. Hey Justin, just sending some greetings from Belgium. Love your videos. Your man cave is pretty cool, bro. Thank you. I love that. Thank you, Belgium. Amory Pectus. Hey, Justin, I'm 15 year old. Want to make money with photography? I want to collab with brands. How can I do that? Shoot a ton of photos to the point where your photos are amazing, and then offer some brands to start shooting some stuff for free for them until you build a portfolio, and then you can charge money. But if your photos aren't world class, brands won't pay you. And there are so many photographers out there, so you just got to get out for hours and hours every day stop watching netflix don't watch too much youtube get out there shoot edit shoot edit watch a video learn a new technique shoot edit watch a video learn a new, new technique shoot edit shoot edit shoot edit commit your life to it that's how you're gonna do it charlie andy i love your youtube channel just subscribed like a day day ago guatemala yeah love i know what you meant sorry ha uh, anyway welcome to the channel i love this actually this was if I, if I was honest, if I could find a way to actually produce like like helpful videos live, I would just do that because, well, one, it's easy to produce. I mean, you have to make a bunch of pre-recorded stuff because I like hanging out. The comments are always so good. Uh, TWHC, the G7 is weird. Low light is really what ticks me off. I've got to shoot a proposal at night in a few days. And I'm really worried the G7 is really going to get good results in the dark with minimal light. Fast lenses. That's what you got to do with Panasonic is make sure you, you know, get some, whether it's, you know, I ended up with the 70 or the 35 to 100 2 8 and the 12 to 35 2 8. Um, but, you know, also some primes like the 42.5 f 1.7 with the power OIS is not that expensive. And that lens lets in a ton of light. So that's a good option. You can look in the speed boosters, but it just makes it slower. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Waffle King, I heard a famous YouTuber say he mentioned this to Sony engineers and they were kind of stunned. They'd never heard of this request. That would be surprising to me on one hand, but also not surprising. When I was at NAB and I was at the Panasonic booth and I was talking to like one of the guys there, he's like, I don't know, like one of their senior reps about, hey, when are we going to get proper autofocusing? He just kind of like laughed it off because like for them, the there's a, there's a hit you take to quality and they kind of think it's ridiculous that people in his mind would need great autofocusing. But he was the guy who was saying things like, he's like, well, you don't want to vlog with an ultra wide angle lens, vlog with uh, basically like a 42.5 millimeter, like an 85 millimeter. He's like, because then your face will, you know, look better. And he's like, people don't, people don't want their faces looking bad. You know, you don't vlog with an ultra wide angle lens. And I'm like, you don't know what vlogging is. I'm like, I don't have a six foot long selfie stick to stick out there to be able to use that lens. But I just like, he didn't get it. So I don't know. Sometimes there's people like, they just don't get it. Or they're just really focused on what they're doing. But if you're in front of the camera, you need that flip out screen. Like Sony's are great when you're behind the camera. But when you're in front of it, it's actually so annoying. But Ah, good question, Josh Boozy. Maybe not tech related, but now that I have the tech, how does one get over the fear and anxiety of vlogging in public? The struggle is real. And for me, that always just comes back to the belief that... Um, uh, the camera is a person. It's all of you guys, and I'm talking to you guys. And yeah, it's weird, uh, for sure. Um, and I guess you just got to do it enough until it's not as weird um, and get hyper. I don't know. But yeah, there's definitely times, and even me, like there's still times where like if somebody's like right there, I'm not just going to pull up my camera and talk. But there's also other times where it's like, I guess that's you as a whole person is just not being insecure. So it's tough, though. But yeah, you just gotta you just gotta do it and do it and do it and do it until it starts feeling normal. But no, oh, I'm almost done, you guys. Talking for an hour. Better Falcon, I'm going to BH B and H Superstore this weekend. I've never been. I want to go. I've never been to New York. How does like right now? I'm just like I need to get to New York. I don't know why. I have this like inner feeling where I'm just like New York, New York, New York. I need to get there. I need to get there. Which is weird. I just watch too much YouTube, I guess, or something. But anyway, I'd love to check that out. Uh, Dean Baylor, what's your video backup solution? Uh, Kluge at best right now. I have like a five terabyte hard drive that I just used the backup on a Mac 
land, whatever that's called. It's getting late and I'm getting tired, but now it's full. And so I'm probably gonna do back blaze uh, because it's easy and I need to like get on it. But also I've kept all of the raw files for all of my videos I've created. And I'm kind of the point where, especially like the older vlogs, like I thought maybe I'd go back to them. I won't. And I have the like final outputted versions, edited versions, but I just thought maybe there'll be something in the parts I didn't edit that I want to pull out. But now I'm to the point where like, nah. So anyway, I just keep buying bigger. I have a two terabyte, a three terabyte, a four terabyte, a five terabyte, and I just kind of keep buying bigger hard drives and trying to back it up, but it's not a great solution. So yeah, I need to figure that out. But anyway, need to be, do better with that. Uh, John Driggs, what do you think about the future of Canon mirrorless full frame? Well, I'll be honest. There's So there's kind of like two theories out there right now. One theory is Canon actually has a banger of a full frame mirrorless that they're about to drop a bomb on Sony and they've been keeping it under wraps like crazily and it's going to be unreal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I buy that, but that would be cool. I would love that. But the other one is they had a full frame mirrorless camera and then Sony dropped the a7 III for like $2,000 with all those features and they were like, okay, uh, we'll get rid of that and we got to go back to the drawing board because... They couldn't come up with something with less features or maybe with similar features, but they were planning to charge like twice as much money and they, they can't do that. So the problem is, is they're behind and I think they got romantic about digital SLRs. Everybody else is doing mirrorless. I think they were like, ah, mirrorless. That's not for pros. Pros aren't going to want to use mirrorless. They're going to look through a mirror. And then Sony just kept churning at what Sony does. And then at one point they went, uh-oh, this mirrorless thing is here to stay because we didn't anticipate how big video was going to be and these work so great for it. And so, I don't know, I honestly think they're behind and I hope that they're a big enough company with big enough resources to invest in it. But I also know they've got so much invested in their traditional digital SLRs that they're not a company who will ever cannibalize some of their other sales. And we see this all the time where they just like hold back a feature because they're like, no, we're not gonna put that feature in because that might take away sales from something else. And companies that do that, I think, lose in the end. So I fear that Canon is just going to lose. Or what's going to happen is they're going to lose a lot and then they're going to decide, screw it. We just got to put out the best products and be competitive and try and get our market share back. And that might take a few more years. So I don't know what happens. Uh, but I would love for something, yeah, to come that would be better. Better. A full-frame mirrorless that could actually compete with a flip-out screen. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, a couple more. Curse Paradise. I love Backblaze. Fun fact, you can back up any attached hard drives for free. <laughs> All right. Because I've got like, I've got a hub and like three, three big hard drives and then three small hard drives. And I just like plug them all in. If they back up. That'd be sick. It's going to be a big first backup, but uh, people's NYC is so expensive. Yeah. Like I don't want to, I don't want to live there. I just want to like visit. I have a, if, if you guys could see our like office, it's just like spare room in my house, like 400 square feet where I'm like, this in New York would probably be a couple thousand dollars a month. So I, I like where I live. I just, I want to go and hang out there for a bit. So oh, anyway, okay, you guys, the timer <coughs> is over an hour and I try not to go over that and I need to go to bed. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys are the best. I'm going to end the live stream and say, see you guys soon. Um, check out Justin and Greg. If you guys don't mind, it would actually mean the world to me if you guys would subscribe and try out a few of the vlogs and give me some feedback. Like I'd actually, I'm genuinely, I'm serious about this, you guys. Go check out a couple of vlogs on Justin and Greg if, if you can afford the time and leave a comment. And I don't care if you've got some like constructive criticism, you know, or some ideas or different things, because we want that to flourish. And sometimes you need that. So if you watch a couple, maybe don't just watch one. You got to like, because they're kind of different. Watch, watch one or two if you can. If you can't handle it, you might hate us. Some people hate us. And that's good, because if nobody hates you, nobody loves you. But you might really like it. Anyway, I appreciate that. The link is in the description. Check it out. Smash that like button on this or don't. I'd actually more like, just go and subscribe to Justin Gregg. That'd be awesome. Okay, you guys, have a good night. I will see you around here sometime soon. And I got to remember how to stop this. I think I can do it here. No, well, that's the RTMP thing. Can I end this? Oh, I can click a play ad button. I won't do that to you guys. That's a silly thing to do.